We have with us today Dr. Mike Posner. He's now emeritus professor from the University of Oregon, and he's one of the leading figures in psychology and cognitive neuroscience for many years. As a matter of fact, he is one of the founders of the cognitive neuroscience. He's also been awarded very, very an uh, enormous quantity of uh, awards and medals. The last one, which is very important, is the National Medal of Science in 209, I think. Right. And uh, he's going to answer some of the questions that we are going to, to pose for him. Well, Mike, you've been a leading figure of the cognitive uh, psychology and also before of psychology. My first question will be, what do you think that psychology will contribute or what is the importance of psychology for science and mostly for neuroscience? It's a pleasure to be here with you today for this honorary event that you're having and also to meet so many good old friends in Granada University. Psychology in conjunction with neuroscience has been able to make the human brain accessible to scientific analysis. And this has given rise to many new findings about how the structure, the physical structure of the human brain uh, influences our thought processes and our learning and our perception. In 1970, when I started in this field, the mantra was psychology is all about software. It doesn't matter what the hardware is. But this turned out not to be true. Psychology is about the software. Software is certainly important. But the hardware constrains what software can be run. And we've learned, I think, many new things about the overall physical structure of the human brain. For example, even as brilliant a person as Luria thought that there was a sensory system reported to an association system which reported to a higher level cognitive system. We now know the close interaction between these systems, helping us to understand why even our perceptions, even our early perceptions can be influenced by what we know about the world, by our expectations, and by our intentions. So I think uh, psychology's made a, at least a preliminary contribution. As you know, in science, everything is up for grabs. New findings may mean different things. Second question that uh, is mostly related to your work on attention, because you've been also a leading figure in this field, and actually we had the relation, a close relation, a study in attention, and you became doctor honoris causa of this university in Granada some years ago, because we were contributing, we were working together in this field. Tell me one thing, what do you think that attention means for the overall structure of the cognitive system? Well, I believe, uh, as Titchener did at the start of the 20th century, that attention is really the centerpiece of the study of psychology. And Mary Rothbard and I wrote an article in 2007 in which we attempted to integrate all areas of psychology, clinical, developmental, social, and so on, around the attentional networks of the human brain. Of course, we weren't that successful, but I do believe the general theme that attentional networks, as we've come to understand them as physically represented in the human brain, are important for language, for perception, for the development of the brain, and many other things. So uh, I'm glad I chose to work in the area of attention, and I appreciate very much what you said, and particularly the recognition that the University of Granada gave me by, making me, by giving me an honorary doctorate. 
Well, now I'm going to ask you a tricky question. Tell me, you know that uh, for many years, the knowledge that we have of the brain is improving and is advancing. And one hears from time to time that uh, philosophers and scientists say that once we have a good and full knowledge of the human brain, psychological concept will not be needed. What do you think about it? I don't believe it. I believe that in order to apply what we understand about the human brain to real human problems, we have to have them described at the psychological level. I mean, it's important to know the time course of myelination of individual fibers in the brain. That's useful information, but it doesn't tell you what to do about the development of a child. It doesn't tell you how to design an educational system. My hope is that cognitive neuroscience and neuroscience in general will illuminate many questions joined with psychology. It will be able to apply those questions to education, child development, and to psychopathology, among other areas. Yeah. Well, my last question will be, what are the big questions for neuroscience and cognitive neuroscience in particular for the future? That's hard to say, of course, but I'll give it a try. I do think it's important to, that we will come to understand more about what's called self-regulation, voluntary control of one's thoughts and emotions. And maybe we'll come to understand how we can not only improve the ability to control oneself, but also how we can develop the proper social context in which the self-control can be exercised for important, valuable human functions. So I think that's one important area. And of course, psychology is involved with the study of education, and we hope to make more and more improvements in curricula due to new facts that are learned in psychology. I also expect that psychologists and cognitive neuroscientists will help develop methods which will actually allow us to control the brain networks we've come to understand and to understand what that control can do in the hands of the individual person. That is to improve their prospects of self-regulation and self-control. These are all areas that I think will be areas of future development I think we always have to be modest about what can be achieved here, but uh, I've been in the field a long time. It seems such a different field 50 or 60 years ago than it does now, but never a field with more promise to help ameliorate the human condition and to lead to a stronger understanding of the relationship between the brain and the mind. Well, thank you very much for being with us, Mike.